Hello, it's Brian Shadow Leverage and Lean, and today is Monday, which means it's Macro Monday. And I can't think of a better way to start out your week than being more efficient and effective on your computer. And the best way to do that is use our latest macro. What kind of macro we post in this morning? Let me show you. All right, this is the macro we're dropping this morning. This is an Outlook macro looping in. So you receive an email with a question and quickly notice this, this isn't something you should be answering. Maybe you don't know the answer and maybe you don't have the authority to really respond. The good news is you know who should be looped into the email. You do that and respond. But if this happens frequently enough, you realize how much time you're wasting just to pull in the appropriate recipients into an email. If you want to be more efficient, check out this looping in Outlook macro that we're dropping. Running this macro can do a multiple of things. It will display an input box allowing you to see the appropriate potential recipients to pull into the email. You just need to enter the leading number and then three actions can potentially happen. The recipient's email will be automatically CC'd to the current email and then text will appear in the body of the reply saying that you've looped in a specific individual and with a simple update to the VBA code, you can display a message box giving you the opportunity to automatically send the email immediately or make some edits before sending. If you've yet to see this macro in action, check out our See It In Action video here. But let's get to the most important part of this page, which is the physical code itself. Now, before I dive into the code for this looping in macro, I do want to call out this first time using VBA section. If you've yet to activate the developer tab, update your macro security and set up references for leveraging lean macros, you're going to need to do this. But the good news is this takes no time at all. Let me show you an Outlook. You can just navigate to Outlook, head up to the customized quick access toolbar, drop down two more commands within the Outlook options, head up to customize ribbon. And over in this main tab section, if you scroll down, you'll see the developer tab is not checkmarked. Go ahead and checkmark that and click OK. You'll now see you have a developer tab. Within that developer tab, you can head over to macro security. Within macro security, you'll see that all macros are disabled without notification. Go ahead and enable all macros. This is not recommended because potentially dangerous code could run. That's really if you're running VBA code blindly, you don't know what really is going to happen when you run the code, but you're just trying to find out. What I'm doing in this video is showing you each line of code. You see exactly what the code is doing, so there's no surprises. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into Visual Basic now that macro security is set up. So you'll see I already have some code out here, but I want to show you how to set your references. So head up to Tools, drop down to References, and you'll see the following already selected. Now, I indicated on the Leverage and Lean page there's only specific ones here you need to have selected. You don't need this Office or Forms library set, but I've already got some code out here. I'm using these references. So you just need the big three, Visual Basic for Applications, Outlook Object Library, and Word Object Library. Okay, so while we're in Visual Basic, let's go ahead and create a new module. You'll see I already have a module created macros, but let me show you how to create a new one. You can use this black drop down arrow, and then head over and click module. Now we have module one, and this is where we want to paste this new macro Outlook looping in. So let's navigate back to the Leverage and Lean page and then head up to the top of this code. Now the best way to copy this code is in between the code lines and the physical code itself. You can double click and then selecting all of the code, control C, and then we can navigate back to module one and then paste in all of this code. All right, so let me walk through this macro without running it, just to show you all of the code segments and explain their purpose. You can see this options variable, this is displaying the text that you will see in the input box, helping you decide which recipients to pull in. Based on the leading number you put into the input box, we're then going to fire off this action. You can expand this list by updating the options variable to so you see more text in the input box, and you can expand this action section to then decide, based on the number you put in, what text you are displaying and what CC recipients are associated with each number. We're then going to look to the Outlook email and then we're going to populate that text. 
then we're also going to loop through the CC recipients. I'm basically looping through all of the email addresses that are already in the CC field and then just copying them and adding on the additional ones that you want to loop in. I haven't found a better way to do this. I honestly haven't worked with recipients that much. So this is what I currently have out here. I want to know some feedback. If you see something that could be better in this code, let me know. I want to learn. The final section here, which I have turned off currently, I wanted to give you the option to decide to turn this on or not. Sometimes sending emails can scare people, but I do have the opportunity. You can display a message box, and then based on how you indicate saying yes or no, we can automatically send the email. So I feel like you'd want to enable this if you're really comfortable with what this looping and macro is doing. And if you say, yep, I have everything set up the way I want, I want that message box to then determine, yes, I want to send the email now or no, I have some further updates to make. So let me first show you this macro without this enabled and I'll come back and turn this on. Okay, so let me show you how to create a quick button to fire this macro. You can do this a couple ways because we want to display this when an email's open. I have this example email out here. You can reply to this email and we can create the button here or you can just create a new email and then create the button in there. Let's go ahead and reply to this example email just to kind of show you. I showed you this in the scene in action video. This is the kind of scenario that I'm trying to paint of where I would use this macro. Someone asked me a question I know nothing about or they're trying to ask me to prove something I just don't have the authority to do. Okay, so this is where I really want to display this quick access button. You can go ahead and drop down again to customize quick access toolbar, head over two more commands, and then within customize ribbon, we need to do a couple things. So we're going to create a new group within this new mail message tab. I'm just going to go ahead and select the clipboard because I want it to be just below that. So you can see I've created a new custom group. I go ahead and just I just blank out this name. I don't need to see anything here. You might want to display a name here in the custom group. With the custom group selected, go ahead and drop down from popular commands. We're going to head down to macros. I've got a macro out here already, but you're going to pull in the Outlook looping in macro. We've just pasted into Visual Basic. This is where I clean up the name. All right, so I have that looking the way I want for the display name. And then I like to use this icon here, just that circle looping in and then just the plus symbol. You can add any icon that you want. And then you can go ahead and finish out of this. And now you see our nice custom button to fire this macro. Okay, before I run this macro, I don't have the code set up to pull in any emails. So let me show you what an update would look like to use the leading number one to start looping in, let's say, hypothetically my supervisor. So up in the options section here, you can really just keep in the looping in text, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say that this now is dedicated to loop in my supervisor. And then where you wanna go and pull in the actual email and the text that's going to display in the email body is just under the action equals one, because this is what I'm going to be entering into the input box. So I can just delete out again the text here. This is what will display in the email body if I could type here, goodness. Okay, and then in the CC recipient section, I'm just gonna put in my Gmail account and there we go. Now I do wanna call out, if you wanna add additional emails to pull in, maybe you're pulling in an expanded list. I showed this in the see it in action video, but I didn't show you the code. You can just start to then enter in more emails just following here with the semicolon. For this example, I'm just going to pull in the one looping in my supervisor. You can save Visual Basic. I'm pretty confident this is going to run without saving, uh, but if you feel like you need to, go ahead. And now, let me show you what happens when we run this macro looping in. You're going to see I have some text that's not really doing anything, but I did dedicate the leading number one to looping in my supervisor. You can type that in. You can click OK. I like to just click Enter, and then you can see it pulled in that email address that I wanted and pulled in that text. So let me show you what happens when I enable the message box to display indicating if I want to send the email or not. You can just remove all the comments here. Again, you decide you can save Visual Basic or not. And let me clear out what was just done to show you what happens when I run this again. Okay, so I hit looping in. Again, I enter one, 
and click enter. Now this time you're gonna see the pop-up. Do you wanna send this email now? Now one thing I have yet to figure out is I'm not getting the text to display here, which is why I didn't enable this by default. Once you feel really comfortable with your text that's displaying in the reply, you know exactly what's happening. You know exactly who you're CCing here. You can then decide to click yes. You can tab over to get to yes, or you can hit no. You can make some further updates. But I wanna show you what happens when you click yes. That email is sent. Now think about how fast you can be with this macro if you enable multiple opportunities to loop in different recipients. Now I get a lot of emails from my clients that come to me, but they're really not my area of responsibility or expertise. So I find myself looping in a variety of people which inspired creating this macro. I don't wanna be the bottleneck. I hate the idea of being the one that's delaying something from being replied to. So this is a quick way I can pull in the right people to reply. So this is a quick way I can pull in the right people to respond. Okay, so let me show you the customized section just to make sure I've gone over everything that you can do with this macro. So you can see line 16 to 20, those are our option variable. That's what you're gonna see in the input box that displays to help you indicate what leading number you wanna put in. And then there's the 28 through 39. This is where you're gonna see your actions display. Maybe you expand the list. That's where you're gonna to have to create a new action lines and then put in those variables looping in for the text and then CC recipient for the emails that need to come in. And finally, that message box section 60, 63. This is where you just need to remove the comments, make that available. Again, you don't have to automatically send the email. You can hit no and get in and make some additional updates if you want to say looping in so-and-so and then explain some additional instructions for those CC recipients that you've pulled in. All right, so this is all I've got for this macro. I absolutely appreciate you watching this Macro Monday video. What do you think of this Outlook looping in macro? I absolutely want to know what you think of this one. Thank you so much for watching stay awesome thank you so much for taking time to view this video i really do appreciate it if you want to start using the macro seeing the video i have a link in the description if you could do me another big favor please subscribe to my youtube channel stay beat on any new videos that i'm posting like us follow us on all of our other social media channels and as always stay awesome